on the radio all over the country and on MSNBC. Well, I guess potentially all over the world. Uh, please welcome to the I'm Sir Warning Program, Harry Connie Jr. Good morning, Mr. Connie. Thanks, man. It's good to be with you. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. It's a little early, but I'm, I'm all right. Charles, uh, my buddy here, McCord, who you just met, is a huge... We're not just saying this. Well, Charles is a musician himself. That's what I'm... I'm starting to figure it, out. It, 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 as I said, except in this company. <laughs> you know what we had him play on the... We had him play this on the air. Some Chopin, I heard. Mm -hmm. Fantasy Impromptu. What yeah, is that, it called? Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's well, not easy to play, so... <laughs> I mean, you, you know, he sound, sound pretty good. He did a decent job. He claims he can play it better now. He was... Oh, yeah. You well, always do, you know. But, but he got quarterback. You got to be a clutch player, though, man. You know, got to come out and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you gotta get through it. You yeah, I'm sure it was great. <laughs> but it don't matter if you think you could do it better now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hear Just you. Just like me, I'm about to screw these two songs up. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> so I'll say in advance, I wish I could have done them better. <laughs> so I had on my iPod, I had uh, Dwight Yoakam, Montgomery Gentry, and then uh, who's the guy? Uh, not, not Arthur Rubens, I'm the other guy. The tall Texan. Oh, Van Cliburn. Yeah, I had Van Cliburn's version. Yeah. Man, Van Cliburn's not a Texan, man. He's from Louisiana. He is? Yes, indeed, yeah, man. He, he was the first Louisiana guy to, to uh, win the big, uh, wasn't he the first one to win uh, the Moscow? Yes, he was. Yes, he's he not was. from Texas? Hell no, man. Come on. Well, how about, how about would I don't you, know? Would you think we all the same down there or something like that? You can't distinguish the line between Texas and Louisiana? Come on, man. Well, I was positive he was from Texas. Hey, you, you didn't mention George Jones. Do you have any George Jones on your iPod? A little bit. You're not, you're not a big George fan? I was. Hey, man, you know, I did this. I have <laughs> moved on. I did this duet with George, right. and when I was in Nashville, I went and bought a pair of boots that I wanted him to sign, and I said, hey, man, would you mind signing my boots? And, and he said, man, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, his wife said, George, he said, sign your boots, not shine your boots. <laughs> and, and for a brief moment, George Jones thought I was asking him to shine, shine my his. boots. Nice. That's great. <laughs> so uh, I asked uh, Harry, I says, have you sold 20 million records? He said, I don't know. Shouldn't you know? No, there's, uh, not really. I mean, I'm not a guy who whose career is based on, on record sales, you know. I mean, I'd, I'd like to sell as many records as I can. That's, yeah. part, that's part of it. But my career has never really been as dependent on record sales as sort of the whole, you know, performing. and little, It's a yeah. component of it. But uh, I, don't really, I don't really keep track of that, you know. Never have. Well, the record company would be happy to know that because they're not going to pay you for them anyway. Yeah, I think I just put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> I think you did. I'd like to publicly say I'm resigning from some... Re retraction. Yeah, 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 yeah. See what I'm saying? I screw everything up. Now, hey, if I could uh, do this interview over again, I'd say how important my record sales are. Hey, were. Harry's not keeping track. That's good. <laughs> uh, how, did you, uh, how did you get started? Your dad was a district attorney. In yeah, he was a DA of New Orleans for... Texas. No, 30 years. <laughs> For 30 years, he was a DA down there. But he, he, was he before or after Jim? Garrison. He defeated Jim Garrison. Oh, he did? Yeah. He, he ran against him in, in 69 and lost, okay. and then ran against him again in 72 and won. That boy was off the hook, wasn't he, Jim Garrison? A little bit from what I understand. Yeah. It was, I was just a, a small kid, but apparently he had, he had some different ways of looking at things. So you are from a musical family or not? Not really. My, my dad, he, he's a musical guy, right. but he wasn't a musician. My mom, I think, probably had, definitely had some musicians on her side, but they all lived, they all came from New York, so you know so or you, New Jersey I can't tell the difference <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna let it go bro no, I'm, I I'm using comedy to dig myself out of the big hole I put in, myself in with my record label about five minutes ago I can see that who is your record label by Sony way? Sony BMG oh well they're not gonna pay you anyway yeah, they're sure. not gonna pay you whether you keep track or not yeah I guess it doesn't they're, no really they're not gonna pay you they don't pay anybody uh, so, so you start playing the piano what yeah, I started when I was like three years old. The first time I played was at my, my dad's uh, campaign headquarters opening. My mom really wanted me to play. You know, a lot of times a parent will yeah. kind of push you on stage to play. And uh, did your parents push you to play the they did. The Chopin? A oh, no, no, of, no, they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> can you they see did. him in the wings back oh, there saying, God. come on, they, you can do this. They would be proud. And you, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I just I played the Star Spangled Banner. And they, uh, Charles Pence are dead. Thank you for bringing <laughs> oh, that up, by the way, Harry. No, no, it's okay. Shall we talk about the gas station in West Virginia while we're at it? 
Oh, yes. That's great. <laughs> well, how was this, this live radio? That's uh, right. TV, I yeah. guess. So. I'm, well, I'm well aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were planning the campaign thing. You're three. Yeah, yeah. No, I was five. Five. And, uh, but what's the difference? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just, I, I really got a, got a big kick out of playing in front of people. And uh, it was great, man. It was, i just been doing it ever since. Were you any good at five? No. I'm barely any good now. <laughs> right. No, well, that, not to patronize you because you don't need that, but that's not true. I mean, you're a great, according to Charles, and knows a lot about it. One of you said, according to yeah. Charles, extremely quickly and quietly, <laughs> you're really great, according to Charles, from what well, I... No, no, I don't know anything about it. You know, so basically, I, the only reason I'm here is because of Charles. No, no, you've you, never even heard of me, have you? Oh, yes, I you, have. You think I'm Chris Isaac, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, know. I think I know a little bit better than that. <laughs> no, we listen to the record. No, we don't have anybody on we don't want to have on. Oh, I appreciate that. So, well, it's good to be we here. We wanted to have you on. Well, so. thanks. So. I didn't want to be on, which sort of balances things out a little bit. I think. <laughs> Were you a child prodigy, or are you now? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was I was childish. I, that I still am. But the the prodigy part, man, you know, it's something that there, it, it it had been said, but I never sort of subscribed to that. That was just, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, that's ridiculous. I think. Well, it's not either. For crying out loud. I loved it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it, I, I was so. That's the the thing that was a little unusual was my passion for it. Like all yeah. I wanted to do was play the piano. I never played on really any sports teams or did anything else. All I did all day was play the piano and sing. And and in that way, it was probably unusual. And then, uh, uh, Mr. Marsalis, how'd you get hooked up with him? Well, there's a school in New Orleans called the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. Oh. And uh, Ellis was a teacher there. And, and uh, is a part of the public school system down there. And, and Winton and Branford and all, all, all of these guys came through uh, Ellis's tutelage. And it was amazing because he's, he's the best teacher I ever had. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it uh, if being a white boy in New Orleans and wanting to play the piano, is that... Is there a barrier you have to get by there or no? No, not, not down there. Especially, I mean, I was born in 67, so by the time I came up, you know, that, a lot of that, I don't know, it's, it's, just, it's just different. Like, my generation didn't think about it too much. And the older generation, you, you mentioned Aaron Neville before, what a great guy he is. Man, those guys were always so supportive. I think they could tell pretty quickly if you were real serious about playing, uh, you know, whether you're black or white or so whatever. No matter. I was talking. Well, go ahead. Yeah, well, trying to. Um, they didn't really care, you know, one way or another. You just have to be serious and begin. May I speak now? Yeah, yes, you may. Thank you. So you just have to demonstrate whether you can play or not. So I know, I it's all on the line. I feel like I have to prove myself. I thought no. I was past that stage. No, no, I've, no. I've got a comrade over here who's saying, hey, you, you're really good. And then the, the big man is saying, oh, let's we'll see if you can play. No, I just... Oh, man, 28 half the hour time. That's pretty good. <laughs> Mr. Connick is fairly competent. We'd have had you on before this. We'd have known you <laughs> They call morning. me Harry Competent Jr. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> what's going on in New Orleans? Well, uh, we have a project down there called the New Orleans Musicians Village. You mentioned Branford Marsalis before. Right. And Branford and I, were, we were driving to, to Houston after Katrina to go see the folks in the Astrodome, the evacuees. And we started thinking about something that we could do, you know, because we're both musicians, man, and, and a lot of people talk a lot of game, but when it really comes down to doing something, we were thinking, what, what can we do? Well, we teamed up with Habitat for Humanity, and now we have this thing called Musician's Village, which is about, we, we bought about eight acres, about five city blocks in 2006, and it's going to be 70 houses in 10 elderly friendly duplex apartments with a with a, a community center there called the Ellis Marsala School for Music in the Upper Ninth Ward which was very badly uh, devastated and then over the next five years we hope to have about 1500 uh, houses in total and it's going great we've had like 20,000 volunteers from all over the world come down and build and these houses are 100 percent volunteer uh, built so we're so grateful for for all of those people helping but, you know? Uh, it's still a mess, isn't it? Oh, it's terrible, man. I mean, if you go down... Whose fault is that? Because it's still a mess. Know. I don't know. That's the last thing on my mind. The, the first thing on my mind is to try to actually do something. And this project is really becoming successful. I mean... Well, you find out whose fault it is. You can get them to do something about it. Um, it's not my...